on you for today's video I'm going to share some tips in passing the CMA exam. So for a quick intro, I took the exam in September and October 2019. Yes, that was pre-pandemic. Also, I enrolled in a review center here in the Philippines. I started attending the review classes in March 2019 but actually really reviewed for the exam starting July 2019. So that's roughly three to four months of intensive review before taking the part two in September 2019 and the part one of the CMA's exam in October 2019. Also, I was a working professional during all this, but mind you, we didn't work too much overtime hours in the office, so that gave me more time in studying for the exam. Finally, I got my results in November and December 2019 for part two and part one respectively. That's six weeks after the exam month for each exam. So just a little disclaimer, I'm not an expert nor am I an expert reviewer but I just wanted to share all these tips that helped me in passing the CMA exam and I hope this helps you too. So for the first important thing that you have to know in passing the CMA exam is of course the content. You have to know the contents of the exam. And for a quick view, here are the topics under part 1 and part 2. So for a more detailed content, please see the link below in the description box. So of course, this is very important because the type of review plan that you will make for yourself will depend on the contents itself. Some of you may have a strong background with some of the subjects, but some might not. So you really have to know what you're dealing with because number two, you have to know if this is your review or is this your first view. When you're done with number one, which is knowing the contents, you have to gauge yourself if this will be your review or will this be the first time you will be dealing or really studying the topics in the exam. In my case, I was really familiar with some of the topics like auditing or financial reporting, but I knew that in some of the topics, I have to brush up on my skills like international finance and capital budgeting and other theories. So if you think that you have to brush up on a lot of subjects, then you have to set more time and adjust your timing to make sure that you get to study all of the subjects before actually taking the exam. Also, here is when you'll decide if you are going to enroll in a review center or you will do self-study. So it will really depend on you and your study style and of course, there's also the financial aspect that we have to consider. And once you've decided if you're going in a review center or you're going to self-study, here's where the third important thing in passing the CMA exam comes in. That's schedule and time. You have to set your schedule and a lot of time. I am reminded of the Parkinson's law which is an adage that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. According to the Parkinson's law, we have to set a deadline because if we don't set a deadline for ourselves, we think we'll have all the time in the world, we'll think that we have forever to finish reviewing and end up not reviewing at all. So for number three, we have to set a schedule for our exam. You have to decide when you will take the exam and which part are you going to take. So in my case, up until I scheduled my exam date, I was really feeling no pressure at all and it led me to procrastinating. That's why I started attending the review classes in March 2019 but only really reviewed for the exam in July 2019 because it was only in July 2019 that I really decided that I'm going to take both parts in the September and October testing window. So for you, you have to decide which window are you going to take the exams and which part are you going to take in those testing windows. If you're aiming for the CMA awards like the gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal, or certificate of distinguished performance, then you have to take both parts in the same testing window. If you think it will be better for you to take one exam part per testing window, then it's up to you. But what's important is that you set the exam schedule so that you'll have a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, unless you have a strong, very strong self-discipline, you are more likely to procrastinate and never get the reviewing done. Then when you finally know when you're going to take an exam, you have to allot time to really study for the exam. And that's where number four comes in. You have to set up a review plan, plus some allowances. 
As a master procrastinator, I am a believer of a to-do list. You know, psychology also supports this, that if you jot down the things that you have to do, then it will feel more structured and you are more likely to do those things because your mind will be set that you have these things to finish and hence motivate you to really do this task. So, it really is important to set up a review plan to make sure that you will finish everything, every topic, and every subject that you'll have to finish reviewing. But of course, don't overestimate your time and put some allowances on your review plan or your study plan in case of unforeseen emergencies or maybe work or business events or maybe when Dr. Ock attacks. Hello, Peter. Hi, Marvel fans. So as I was saying, you have to set up a realistic study plan and make sure that you finish reviewing the theories, practicing problems, and practicing for essays. And for the next one are the materials. Don't overdo it in the materials section. What I used when I was reviewing for the CMA exam are Wiley textbooks and Wiley test banks. Also, the review material, uh, the review center materials, and also I use this book by Gitman for some of the theories that I still can't understand, even with the Wiley textbook. And if I still don't understand, I go to Google for some more references and for some more readings so that I can fully understand the topic. What's important is that you really understand the concepts because the questions in the CMA exam are really to test if you understand the concept and if you are fit to be a management accountant. So what I make sure is that I really understand the concept, I practice problems to really prove that I understand those concepts, and then I practice the essay. And if you actually take a look at the previous questions of the CMA exam, it's more on analysis based and it's really testing you if you have the mindset of a CMA, someone who will be able to decide for the most optimal choice for a company. So you have to make sure that you understand the theories, you understand why the theories are like that, you understand how to solve the problems based on the theories, and also don't forget to practice for the essays. And of course, for my next very important ingredient in passing the CMA exam is to just do it. You have to really just start reviewing for the CMA exam if you are still afraid to take the exam and you feel that if you feel like you are not yet ready, then you just have to start small and start with one topic and of course eliminate distractions and you know, just delayed gratification. Uh, just sacrifice a bit of a time right now to study and finish the exam because later on comes the reward. For me, I really did an intensive review for those three months in July, August, September, and October. So, and my mindset during that time is that I'm already here, I've already started, so why not finish it with all my might? So, just sacrifice for a little and just have some delayed gratifications for all the things that you want right now. So during my review time, I was also distracted by, with a lot of things. I have movies I wanted to watch, series I wanted to watch, books I wanted to read, but I put all that in my distraction list. Um, so just eliminate the distractions and also don't forget to reward small wins if you finish reviewing certain parts, certain topics. So you're already there and for my last and final ingredient in passing the CMA exam is to just take the exam with all your might. So you have to optimize yourself for the exam. Make sure that you are ready physically, mentally. Make sure that you have rested well. You have slept enough before the exam day. And really just give your best when you're taking the exam. Remember that you have four hours to finish one part and make sure to also budget your time during the exam for you to be able to finish all the multiple choice questions and then finish the essay part. So for me, I did not spend so much time to a question that I don't know, but make sure to not leave a blank during the exam. What I did for questions or MCQ questions that I wasn't sure of was to answer them the best that I can or <laughs> or make the best reasonable guess and then mark it with a flag and then proceed to the other questions. If I still have time in the three hours allotted for the MCQs, then I go back to those flag questions and then try to analyze again if I did guess the correct answer. So once I'm done with the MCQ, 
of course, I now proceed to the essay and just make sure that you have written all the most important words or the key words in the essay part and hopefully you finish the exam within those four hours. So that's it. If you have done your best in the review part of taking the CMA exam, then I know that you will do very well in taking the CMA exams. So remember that passing the CMA exam does not only rely on the four hours of the actual exam but in the long hours of review leading to the actual exam. If we want to pass the CMA exam, we have to study for it, sacrifice a little, and remember that nothing worth having comes easy. So this is it and I hope this video has been helpful for you and good luck on your exam. See you next time!